Blessed be the name of the living Jesus Christ, the most high God, he that was and is and is coming back very soon. Are you ready for him? My name is Witness Ken Paul Obieke of the Heaven's Mandate Worldwide. We are mandated to reveal Jesus to the dying world, the living Jesus to the dying world, to sanitize the church, depopulate hell, populate heaven, and bring fulfillment of all eternal blessings on the children of the Most High God. We are bringing you a message that will transform your life today and make you that person who Jesus Christ died for you to be. The topic says, you as Jesus. I know you are wondering. Yes. You are Jesus. I am Jesus. When Jesus Christ was going, he willed his name to us. Listen very carefully so that you will catch this and move with this. Mesmerize the kingdom of darkness. Live the victorious life of Jesus Christ from today. That is what it means to be in the kingdom. Now, listen very carefully. Whenever a man is dying in the world, he, he will write a will. But the will that Jesus Christ wrote for us, he willed himself to us. In the spiritual name means everything. That's why the Bible said that God has highly exalted Jesus and I've given him a name above all names that at the name of Jesus every day shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of the Father. He's the head of all principalities and powers. And the word of the Lord says that we are seated with him at the right hand of God in the heavenly places. When we are seated with Christ at the right hand of God in the heavenly places, some of us don't understand the meaning of that right hand. Some of them, of us, might think that that right hand means right hand position, just like that. No. When you hear right hand of God in this manner, it's talking about the power of God, the authority of God. And we are seated with Christ. How are we seated with him? In him. We are seated in Christ at the right hand of God. That is in power in his power, in his authority. When Jesus Christ was going, uh, we remember what happened when he had appointment uh, of handover of, he said, all powers, or rather all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. He was passing it over to the church. That is you. That is Ken Paul. I don't know your own name, but that is you. Now, you listen very carefully and get the mystery because we are preaching the kingdom of mystery. When Jesus Christ, what Jesus gave us was not silver and gold. What Jesus gave us is more than silver and gold, more than whatever the earth can give. He gave us himself. And that's why when we are eating the Holy Communion, we should understand what we are eating. Now, Jesus willed his name to us. You need to know what you have before you can use it well. He willed his name to us. He willed himself to us. And so when I say you as Jesus, I want you to come into divine revelation or connection of where I am going so that it can start working in your life for you now. 
to the glory of God. Now, the word of the Lord said, And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. The gospel. Not anyhow gospel. The gospel, which is the power of salvation, which is Christ and him crucified. Not the empty gossip. Not the kind of things we are hearing today that cannot transform any life. The gospel is meant to transform us and conform us to the image of Christ. The gospel is meant to save sinners. Today we have unsaved uh, saints, so to say. People who claim that Jesus has saved them from sin, but they are still slaves of sin. That is rubbish. That doesn't exist. Christ didn't save you in sin. He saved you from sin. When he saved you from sin, he saved you from the dominion of sin. Now you live victorious over sin. Because you are saved. You cannot come out and say you are saved when you are still a fornicator, you are still a liar, you are still a malice keeper, you are still carrying unforgiveness, you are still dressing like harlot. You know, you say you are saved. Because one pastor deceived you, that once you answered altar call, stood out like that day, you stood out, they called altar call, altar call. You came out and stood out like I'm Robert, they're about to shoot. And at the end of the day, you say, say, after me. And then you said, after me. And then you go back to your arm robbery. Go back to your sin. And you say you are saved. That is deceit. You are saved from what? Can you live in what you are saved from? And all this is because the gospel is not being preached. The cross of salvation is not being presented. So that people can encounter the cross and the power of sin, the dominion of sin will be broken in their lives. Instead, we are telling people what God says he shall add unto them if they seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness. That's not the gospel. And so, I, I move ahead. It says, He who believes and is baptized shall be saved, but he who believes not shall be damned. It, 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 it breaks my heart to know that many people in the churches today will be damned. And no wonder Jesus told me to go and sanitize his church. It, it pains my heart to know that many of us are standing behind the pulpit and pushing people inside the pit rather than pulling them out of the pit. Pulpit means pull them out of the pit. Pull them out of the fire. But many of us are pushing them inside the fire because we want to build our own empires. The judgment is coming. It's not going to be easy. Repent now before it's too late. And so the word of the Lord said, He who believes and is baptized shall be saved, but he who believes not shall be damned. I pray for you that by the reason of this message you are hearing today, there is repentance that will come into your heart to truly, truly believe in Jesus. If you believe, you behave. If you believe, you become. You don't just believe. Faith without works is dead. If you say you believe and you are not behaving, <laughs> it shows you have not become. You are not born again. You are Anybody that is telling you any other thing is not helping you, what will help you is to know the truth so that the truth will set you free. Because the power of the Holy Ghost is available to make you to be truly born again, overcome sin, live victoriously. We were all there and we know what happened in our lives. Paul said something very sweet. He said, leaving behind. How, what have you left behind? <laughs> he said, I pressed towards the mark. Yeah, Paul is recognizing something. Despite he has not apprehended, he has not perfected, but he's no more where he is. You cannot answer believer and still be in sin. He said, leaving behind. You have not left behind the things you are supposed to leave behind. I'm trying to show you things that you need to take care of so that you can become who the Lord has invested in you to be if you are a child of God. And if you are not yet, so you can repent because that's the best thing to be. And so the word of the Lord said, and these signs shall follow them who believe. These signs shall follow them who believe. Christianity without signs, without wonders, without miracle is another religion. Because to start with, you are being born again is a miracle. The birth of Jesus is a miracle. 
So a Christian that knows who he or she is in Christ does not run after signs. Signs run after you. It doesn't run after miracles. It doesn't run after these magicians that are everywhere. Most of these people you see making noise everywhere, jumping up and down on the internet, this and that. All those things we are doing are magic. Very few are still on the narrow way. Very few are still on the side of Jesus Christ. The true Jesus, not another Jesus. Now the word of the Lord says, And these signs shall follow them who believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. Now when Jesus say in my name, that means your own name is changed. That means your own power or whatever you think you have is gone. It is now in his name. He has willed his name to you. In, 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 in the legal profession, when somebody gives you what is called the power of attorney to do anything on his or her behalf, it is believed and is regarded that it is the person. Even if the person is not there, the person you gave the power of attorney to represent you means that is you. And in the supernatural, it's more than that. That's why we are sons of God when we got born again. And so Jesus willed his name to us. So that you that say you are born again and the devils are intimidating you and this and that, you are complaining up and down and running up and down, is because you don't know what you have in your account. Jesus Christ willed his name to you. And that means willing everything, everything that God has, God can do to you. There is no will that can be compared with that. When you come to the understanding of this mystery, when demons see you, they see Jesus. Because on that day when you were gone, who God sees each time he sees you is Jesus, not you. We have been made the righteousness of God in Christ. God doesn't see me. God doesn't see you. God doesn't recognize us. Jesus is the first among many brethren. We hide behind the cross. And so here the word of the Lord says that Jesus Christ has willed his name to us. And so let me move up with, uh, uh, with verse uh, 18. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. You see, I always tell people, and I want you to understand it very well, that Jesus Christ has placed the church against sickness and disease. Bless believers against sickness and disease. It doesn't matter whether you are pastor or not. The hand that he said when you lay, they shall recover. Recovery might not be instant. That's where some people are confused. It might be a process, but the recovery is sure. The power, the authority that Jesus had, he gave to us. Now, I want to show you something that is going to help you more before I, I begin to round up. I want to touch something. There was something that happened in Acts. Acts chapter 19. Listen very carefully. Acts chapter 19. And I'm reading from verse 11. And God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul. Now, these are people who have understood what I'm sharing with you. The mystery I'm sharing with you. You ask Jesus. Paul says, no more I that live, but Christ that lives in me. The life I now live, I live by faith. In this will. In this understanding. Now, the word of the Lord went on and said, So that from his body we are brought unto the sick, handkerchiefs or aprons, and the diseases departed from them, and the evil spirit went out of them. Why? Because Jesus has willed himself to Paul. Jesus has willed himself to you. Jesus has willed himself to me. Demons, the way they bow to Jesus, that's the way they will bow to us. But what happens? The Bible says that the foundation of God standeth sure. Let those who name it the name of the Lord depart from iniquity. Iniquity is worse than sin. Iniquity is what consumes your heart. And so I'm gonna, I want to show you something very, very important. 
I, I am called to raise soldiers of the cross. And I thank God we are raising them everywhere in the world. And you should get ready to join. Soldiers of the cross. Because a revolution is coming forth. A revolution is starting. And you have to be part of it if you are really part of the kingdom. And so the word of the Lord said, uh, Watch this. Then, verse 13, certain of the vagabond Jews, look at how they are described, Exorcists took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits the name of the Lord Jesus, saying, We adjure you by Jesus, whom Paul preaches. And there were seven sons of one skiver, a Jew, and chief of the priests, which did so. Watch this. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are you? Now listen. The evil spirit knew Jesus, knew Paul. The sons of Sceva and the vagabonds, these vagabonds, they did not know Jesus. The demons knew Jesus. And these people, these, these vagabonds, these sons of Sceva, don't know Jesus. And they want to cast out demons that know Jesus. Whereas they themselves don't know Jesus. And the, and the, and the, and the, can you see, can you see confusion? The demon said, Jesus we know. If it is Jesus, we will bow. We are bowing for Paul because he knows Jesus. We are bowing for Paul because Paul knows Jesus has willed himself to him, willed his authority. So we are bowing for Paul. We know Jesus. We know Paul. My dear, have you come to the point where demons can say they know you? This is the secret. Now, look at, look at the embarrassment. These people don't know Jesus. Demons know Jesus. And people who don't know Jesus want to cast out demons that know Jesus. That's what is happening in the church today. You don't know Jesus. Demons know him. And you want to cast out demons that know more than you know. And look at what happened. And the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them and overcame them and prevailed against them so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. Many are naked and wounded today, but they don't know why. The modern day church is naked and wounded. They don't know Jesus. Demons that they are trying to cast out know Jesus. One pastor was telling me what happened. He took the daughter to a, a, a so-called man of God to cast out the demon. And the daughter looked at the, the, the so-called man of God and, and began to laugh. and said, oh, I have suffered. Even this one. This is daughter. This one, Iketo, want to come and cast me out and gave the, the pastor a very dirty slap. I said, you know they look face? <laughs> Brethren, listen. Anybody that is listening to this message, I am praying for you right now that you will know Jesus. And one of the things that will show you that you have known Jesus is that you are obeying him. You hate what he hates and you love what he loves. He loves sinners, but he hates sin. And he went to the cross to die. The cross was an expression of how much God hates sin and how much God loves you. And I want you to understand that today, a new you is imagined. You as Jesus. You begin to speak like Jesus, walk like Jesus. If Jesus hates sin, you must hate sin. If you are in a church that doesn't have sin, live there. That soul church of sons of Sceva, live there. Look for brethren if you need to. Find where Jesus is known and where Jesus is honored and respected. I want to round up by letting you know this. That if you take into action what you have learned today, I am, I, I am not a preacher per se. I bring you revelations. 
I bring you understandings of Jesus Christ. I don't preach religion. I am not called to preach anything outside Jesus Christ and him crucified. That is the center, the cardinal point. Jesus Christ has willed his name to you. The richest billionaire, the richest millionaire, when they are dying, they will what they have to the children. Jesus has done more. He has willed his name to you and I. We have no excuse to fail. We must make him proud. We must make sure that his name is glorified. We must make sure we use this authority and this power. And this authority and power is also above sin. You can't live in sin and say you're a saint. And say you're a believer. And say you're a disciple. A Christian is somebody who Jesus lives in. That's a Christian. A Christian has a lifestyle of Christ-likeness. These people didn't have it. And I want you to understand what I said and let it register in your heart of heart. It will help you all the days of your life that the demons who knew, who knew Jesus attack these people who never knew Jesus but want to use the name of Jesus to cast them out. I want you to get this clear and I want you to get this understanding. Jesus Christ has brought this message to turn you into himself. Wherever you are right now, if you are not born again, you better do. If you backslided, return back to him. That is the starting point. I want you to say after me, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Come and be my Lord and Savior. I want to know you, and I'm knowing you today. Live for me. I don't want to live for myself again. Forgive all my sins. Wash me with your blood. From today, I will live for you. Write my name in the book of life. Take it away from the book of death. Here I am. I am for you. Satan, it is over. I have forsaken you and all your works. When the rapture comes, I will go with Jesus. My mansion in heaven, I possess now. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for saving me. And I want to pray for you wherever you are. Any demon that has been disturbing you, making you to do what you are not supposed to do, I bind that demon in the name of Jesus. Every spirit oppressing you with weakness, with sin, with masturbation, with whatever lies, hatred, I bind that spirit in the name of Jesus. If you are sick in any part of your body, healing is your bread, is your right. I am commanding right now, let the healing power of Jesus hit you. Recover wherever you are. Let blind eyes open. Let the lame walk. Let the lepers be cleansed. In the mighty name of, let the dumb speak. We are in the days of his power. This is the time when Jesus Christ is coming back and has poured out his spirit. God bless you until I come your way again. My name is Witness Ken Paul Obieke of the Heaven's Mandate. Love you with agape in Jesus' name. Amen.